Well, good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the head trader for WealthPress. Today is Thursday. It's the 28th of January, and it's about an hour and 20-something minutes before the opening bell. Now, I usually do my videos pre-open because I want to show you where the market is going, how it's shaking up, and so forth. Now, I said shaking up. I was going to say shaping up, but in this case, it may be as well saying shaking up with all these GameStop now i'm going to say a few words about all these stocks like gamestop and amc that are sh are seeing short squeezes folks let me be let me be very honest with you don't don't go that route it, it, it it's very dangerous you could lose a lot of money very very fast it's unpredictable don't start chasing these short squeezes there's a lot better way to trade that can give you a higher opportunity to make profit with with a degree of risk versus reward this is just straight up gambling and i highly discourage it um when i see this type of activity and if i'm in those stocks i just get out i mean yes you can make money but you can also lose a lot of money and there's just too much uncertainty and we really don't know what's behind it we have a lot of speculation but the bottom line is be responsible and watch out for your money and if you're really interested just buy a share or sell one share you know don't go crazy okay now getting into today's market action i have to say that i wouldn't be responsible to you guys if i didn't say that now getting into market action the futures are down a little bit we we had a bloodbath yesterday and i mean a bloodbath now i'm going to be going back and forth so um, I apologize, but I, I want to kind of give you the, the visual. Market sold off yesterday. This is the 50-day moving average. The S&P is almost at the 50-day moving average, like a hair. We're like at uh, 373.90. The 50-day moving average is at 370. Now, if you look at the Dow Jones, you will see that we are already at the 50-day moving average. This is not happiness, folks. This is not good. If we break below the 50-day moving average, that means we stop buying stocks, most stocks, and we start looking at alternate assets because that means we're in the twilight zone, which is the variant between the 50-day moving average or the distance between the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average. And I call that the twilight zone because when stocks are in there, they're literally in the twilight zone. Market doesn't have strong direction. Uh, there's a lot of congestion, a lot of unforeseen volatility. It's just a mess. And it's actually really hard to trade the market when it's between the 50-day and the 200-day moving average. From my 27 years of experience, again, your experience may be different. And and also, if you're an option premium seller, that's a pretty good time because markets can stay choppy for quite some time when they enter the so-called twilight zone. And I, I just coined that name. It's not an official name. It's just my my opinion of what stocks perform like or what market action looks like when it gets there. So again. The weakness, the main weakness is in the Dow Jones right now, followed by the S&P 500, followed by the NASDAQ, followed by the Russell 2000 from perspective of weakest to the strongest. Because if you see right here, you will see that the Russell 2000 is way above the 50-day moving average. It's all the way to 210. The 50-day moving average is at 195. And if you look at the QQQ, you will also see that it has some distance. Not as much, but it has some distance. But if you look at the SPY, you will see that it's almost there. And if you look at the Dow Jones, it is there. So again, markets are starting to get a little nutty. And this is normal during earnings. And folks, who predicted that the markets were going to go a little bearish because the markets were grossly overbought? I explained to you we were having narrowing of momentum. I explained to you the divergence between price action and uh, the RSI oscillator. I talked about uh, the divergence between price action and the oscillator. I talked about the number of stocks trading above the 50 and the 200-day moving average. I've talked about it at nauseum. And if you want to see more of that, of that analysis, just look at some videos going back. I talk about I talked about it almost daily, okay, for the last three weeks. So it, don't say I didn't warn you because I did. Now, the big report. So that's the biggest threat right now: the fact that the Dow is sitting at the two hundred at, at the fifty day moving average. Now, the fifty day moving average is not the two hundred day moving average. So don't go bearish on me because once we go below the two hundred day moving average, the market becomes bearish. Now, news, 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 news today. We've got juggernaut we got the gdp and we have jobless claims i'm very very concerned about the jobless claims 
Last week, the number was 900,000. This is not a monthly indicator. This is a weekly indicator. This is an indicator that's telling us new claims. If the number is, uh, the consensus is 875,000. Just to give you some feedback, last number was 900,000 new claims. The number before that was 965,000 new claims. And I was hoping we were not going to get to a million, but if the number starts going higher today instead of lower, if we don't go to the 875 or the four week moving average of 848, we're in deep doo-doo. That means the COVID, va uh, the COVID vaccine is not working as expected and people are home at sick and home not working, being sick or unemployed instead of working in the, in the job force. And that's gonna have a major, major impact on the market one way or the other. The other report we're gonna have is the quarterly GDP report. Now, typically, usually, under most circumstances, this is the biggest report of the quarter, but look at the numbers, 33.4 last quarter, 1.1 to 6.8, we're all over the place. So quite honestly, I would not put too much emphasis on the GDP till we get a little further down from this mess. Again, we're expected to slow down to 4.1%, um, hopefully the number is higher than 4.1%. I'd like to see the number uh, at 6%, 6.8%. But again, I wouldn't put too much into the GDP simply because of what America has gone through, what the world has gone through over the past almost a year. I, I, I got to say almost a year. So I would put more focus on the jobless claims report. Um, new home sales, I wouldn't worry about that. Existing home sales are at a 14-year high. Uh, the Fed told us they're not going to do anything to interest rates. So again, GDP is going to be important, but it's not going to be shocking. But if the jobless claims turns higher again, it's going to confirm that the COVID cases are going higher. Tomorrow, we're going to have personal income. But honestly, after today's GDP and jobless claims, I don't think personal income is going to have as big of an impact because this is not a weekly report. It's a monthly report where jobless claims is only lagging by five work days, right? So it's really a very important and timely report. As far as personal income numbers coming out tomorrow, just to give you some idea of what we're expecting. And again, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on this report, but we're the last time it was negative 0.11. Now we're looking at positive number. Again, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on this, but I would put a lot of emphasis on the jobless claim report. So again, GDP could be important just depending on how bad it is or how weak it is. Jobless claims, very, very important, and this can really turn the market on a dime. International trade and advanced goods, um, we kind of know that other countries are slowing down. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna talk about global economy right now, but again, be very, very cautious on international goods because other countries like Europe and Asia are starting to see the uh, African variant of this COVID, which is worse then uh, it's not as worse in terms of dying, but it's easier to catch. It's like twice as easier to catch. So let's talk about global economy just a little bit. I kind of gave you the, the, the 101, but I wanted to kind of go a little deeper into it. Reality check is setting in it, folks, about long-time economic damage from the COVID pandemic. I told you guys, this is not, we're not, we're not just going to sail through the day, you know, run through the daisies and pretend it's not happening. This is bad. And the markets trading at all-time high is not reflecting where the economy really is right now, especially jobless claims, unemployment, and so forth. Hopes are high for President Biden's proposed 1.9 trillion COVID relief package. Worries are growing that it might be scaled back. And if it is, that's going to be devastating. Vaccine rollout has not, and I mean not, progressed in Asia as quickly as they have in the West, which is why I said we may have an issue with international trade. Um, inoculations have not started on a mass scale in Asia. That is so bad, 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 bad. Although approvals have either been granted or on their way in most places, including Australia and Japan. Folks, if Japan and China and Australia can't get their act together, we're going to see part two of what we saw last February and March, and it's going to make its way into America. In Los Angeles, in California, that's why people are getting sick right now. It's that uh, African uh, vac variation of it. Um, more than f daily, daily deaths has, has been mostly in single digit figures until recently, but are now surpassing 100 people a day in Japan. That is bad, 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 bad. Very, 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 very bad. Um, activity has expanded, and we're talking about the GameStop AMC short squeeze activity. It's now uh, going into Australian stocks and other markets. I just want this to stop. This is not good for the economy. 
earnings is the biggest focus of the week. Um, more than 100 companies are reporting. And again, the numbers are mixed and I'm not holding my breath. I'm not expecting the numbers to be very, very solid. But remember, the expectations have been beaten to death. And markets have been mentoring near record highs last week as investors wait solid corporate news against renewed worries the trouble with COVID vaccine rollouts. That's what I've been talking about and the spread of a new variant. That's it right there that might delay recovery from the pandemic. Folks, if this if we find out over the next few weeks that this uh, these vaccines do not work as well, and if we see that China and Japan are getting sick again, it's not going to be pretty. And the $1,400 that Biden wants to send us is not going to help us as much as we think. Now, we already I already talked about the markets being soft in terms of the NASDAQ, and it will roil the rest. It will bleed into the rest of the stock market. In terms of sector strength, I talked about energy and financial. Although they're leading now, these two sectors, energy and financial, they're still in recovery mode. What does that mean? Well, if you look at energy sector, you will see, look at a two-year chart. Look at where we're at. We're at 40. We were at 55 before the breakdown. Look at financial. Look at the two-year chart. We just now broke above that level and we're back in. And I mean heavy in and I'm not happy about what I'm seeing. And consumer discretionary technology, well, they're just grossly overbought and we're seeing a lot of sell-off in the NASDAQ right now. So my only sector that I'm really liking right now are basic materials, industrial, and healthcare. I think basic materials, industrial, and healthcare are going to rise again to the top because energy and financial are not going to be able to do it. And if the market sells off, consumer discretionary and tech are going to continue falling down, which leads defensive stocks, which are material, industrial, and healthcare. And I've got three stocks for you in that group today that are showing pullbacks. First one, one of my favorites. You guys know how much I love this stock. Albemarle lithium stock, one of the biggest producers of lithium batteries in the world. Global specialty chemicals, lithium, bromine, stock up 113% over the last year. Nice little pullback on it. Um, I would wait for it to trade above the 170 level and I would put a stop right around the 156 level. Next one is Mosaic. Notice same thing, breakout, pullback. Breakout, pullback. So on this stock, the Mosaic Company, just to give you an idea of what it does and so forth, leading cor cro crop nutrient companies focus on potash, phosphate, nutrients, agricultural chemicals, industrial basic materials. Hello, hello. I'm very consistent, folks. Again, here I would put a, a buy stop, an entry right above the 27 level. And if we break this bar, 25 something, I'd be out of there. And last one, I like this one, Shockwave Medical, medical company. Let's see what they do. Medical devices for develop commercialized products for medical device treatment of cardiovascular diseases. Look at the one year return, 181%. And look where it is, medical instruments. And remember, medical instruments are not as, mar are as sensitive to market action as other industries like consumer sentiment because you need medical in instruments. And we already know that Biden is going to put a lot of money from the stimulus into healthcare. And it's not just going to COVID, it's going to other sectors as well. So I like I like Shockwave Medical. Uh, I'd be a buyer right above this bar about 122. And if it breaks this bar around the 110, I'd be out. Again, SWAV, I like Shockwave Medical. I like Albemarle on this pullback, and it happens to be one of the strongest stocks right now, and it's one of my favorite stocks, and they're in the right place at the right time, and Mosaic Company. Now, folks, before I let you go, I've got something big for you. You are not going to want to miss this. I mean, you're not going to want to miss this. I pulled back the curtain on my algorithmic trading strategy that leaves traditional stock picking in the dust. I call it Storm, and it technologically mimics billion dollar algorithms that Wall Street uses to send stocks skyrocketing in a matter of hours or plummeting to their death. But the best part, the best part, I'm able to do it with just a few lines of code, thanks to the technology that's available for all of us right now. The stuff that we could do with tech right now is mind blowing. You've got to check out the storm. Again, it mimics multi-billion dollar algorithms 
that as you could see with, with, with GameStop and GMC, they're controlling the markets. They're controlling the markets, folks. But I've got something for you, algorithmic trading strategy, and it leaves traditional stock pickers in the dust. Again, I'm able to do it with just a few lines of code, and I love to show you all everything about it, how to do it, how it works, get you under the hood, and all of that good stuff. Are you ready to see it? Are you ready to see it? Well, you should be, especially in light of what I'm telling you right now. Click on the link below, see exactly, exactly how it works. And folks, you don't want to miss out on this. You really, really don't. And again, post me some feedback. I want to see some comments. I'll respond. I promise I will. Good, bad, ugly, I don't care. I've got a thick skin. I'll talk to you guys soon and have a great day. And stay out of trouble. The, the, the Dow is near the 50-day moving average. Be careful out there. Bye, everyone.